So the mitochondria can be dysfunctional or sick also in different ways. But the medical and the scientific community has linked mitochondrial dysfunction to every disease that I know of. So if you go on PubMed or you know you Google whatever disease you, you want and mitochondrial dysfunction, there is most likely an article that documents some evidence of mitochondrial dysfunction in, in that disease. <laughs> so uh, what we don't know there. And, and even the aging process itself more broadly. Yes, yes, yes. A aging, the, there's a, a very large body of, of, of scientific evidence linking aging process and mitochondria. And I think quite convincingly showing that uh, mitochondria and dysfunctional mitochondria actually can precipitate or accelerate the aging process. Mm -hmm. And one question, you look at the scientific literature and you Google, you know, whatever disease you're interested in, like Alzheimer's or cardiovascular or cancer and mitochondrial dysfunction, then you find all these papers. You never know if it's the disease that happened through some process that we don't understand that caused mitochondrial defects or dysfunction, or if it's a mitochondrial dysfunction that is a primary cause or driver of the disease, right? Mm -hmm. uh, most studies don't allow us to, to understand this. So... Um, the state of the field is there's a lot of evidence showing mitochondria are not happy. <laughs> mitochondria don't work normally in disease. Now, are they the cause of disease or are they the result of disease? Uh, and that's where, you know, there's a, a smaller body of research that addresses this directionality. And um, a big piece in that uh, effort came in the 1980s, actually, where Doug Wallace and uh, Ian Holt in, in England they almost simultaneously discovered that there were defects in the mitochondrial DNA, uh, so mutations or deletions in the mitochondrial genome um, that were the cause of human disease. So that was the first time uh, that it was demonstrated that when the mitochondria don't work properly, this can actually cause disease. Yeah. Uh, and since then, there's been hundreds of studies that document these kind of connections. And uh, you know, every week here in, in the clinic, we see uh, patients who, who walk in with defects in their mitochondria, and then we see, you see the consequences. Uh, you see the consequences on their ability to exercise, to move, their ability to digest food, their ability to you know, move about, and their ability to think and to process things you know, with cognitive function. So it's very clear now that when the mitochondria don't work properly, they can cause disease and, and they can precipitate a lot of age-related disorders. And one of the other lines of evidence from lots of studies is you know, interventions that target mitochondrial health, whether it might, it, it could be something natural, like, you know, let's say polyphenols or EGCG from green tea or something like that, that acts to bolster mitochondrial health in some way, um, or, you know, various other types of hormesis exercise or, or many other types of hormesis that we know have effects on mitochondria. We know also confer uh, various protective effect, uh, effects against various kinds of diseases and have the potential to increased lifespan or at the very least health span. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, like you mentioned, exercise. I think exercise is probably uh, the best, um, you know, health promoting intervention. <laughs> uh, if it was a drug, it'd be amazing. You know, people would take it all the time. Yeah. Um, there, there's so many good side effects and we don't actually know why exercise is good for you. You know, yeah. there's, there's no mechanistic understanding <laughs> of why exercise is, is so good for, uh, for health span. And, and uh, it's not quite sure it makes, uh, it extends longevity. You know, people who exercise a lot don't tend to live, you know, 200 years old. And there's a lot of people who never formally exercise and they don't do, you know, marathon running and all of this. And they end up, you know, living healthy and living very long, but physical activity, you know, being active. Uh, we don't know why that's good. And one theory uh, that we tend to favor is that exercise and physical activity is good for you because it stimulates your mitochondria. Mm -hmm. 